have watched. Unguided, we have helped them progress. And seen them accomplish wonders. Throughout the years, we have never interfered. Until I have a theory about the Eternals. I have a bunch of theories about the Eternals. Um, the like in the opening of the um the Eternal trailer, you see this huge ship decloaking. Mm-hmm. Somehow, like the green, the gold streaks reminded me of Kang's castle. Mm. Remember, now, like, which makes sense now that we have a little bit more context to it, right? Yeah. Oh. Um. So. I have a feeling that somehow that's connected. And I think um, the story for, for the Eternals movie could be um, closely or tied to um, when Neil Gaiman wrote The Eternals. It's basically one of the characters uh, that, like, uh, I forget his name, Sprite, I think, the, the younger one, mm-hmm. wiped out the rest of Eternals' memories. So that could explain why they weren't around during uh, uh, Infinity, Infinity War, War and Endgame, and because of this, um, because of this thing that's happened, maybe that's how they start getting their memories back, or somehow they're awakened. And, and interestingly enough, I'm I'm not sure about this, but I, I've read somewhere that Thanos is actually like half. Eternal half medium. Yeah, you have heard that. So, yeah, so, yeah I, think, that. I think we're going to be setting up for a really big baddie somewhere down the line because you and um, because you'll be the Eternals are back, right? Which they're very closely related to the Celestials, right? Or so we could have we could be having. A Galactus, yep. Or we've seen like glimpses of Egypt, so we and then you've got like D and oh, we're getting an apocalypse look. We're getting early apocalypse we, look. We might, we might, because you get like, um, you get like sort of like DNA symbols all over the trailer. Yeah. And um, and you see, uh. Egypt. So, you know, it's a stretch, but we could be seeing early Sabanur. El Sabanur. Man. That one. I, I, I do. Ooh. I feel like it, they, they're probably going to allow it the seeds to be able to hint on it, but I, I, I have a feeling, again, anything that deals because I think Apocalypse is connected so much to that X-Men world because literally if you, if you reveal Apocalypse, then you're basically just announcing the mutagenic gene. And obviously we've seen little tidbits of people who are considered mutants uh, in the MCU, like people who will eventually be like in, in, in uh, Black Widow, uh, the guy that uh, the Red Guardian broke his arm is a known mutant. So to... Yeah, uh, to, Ursu, 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 Ursa, the bear. Ursa, the um. And so whenever you have, um, yeah, if, if you do that, I, I, do, I do agree with you. They're probably going to go with the Neil Gaiman storyline because it does feel like this was a, everybody was living their lives and then getting their memory back. And it looks like we're going to be looking back as to how they were supposed to be protecting the development of humanity uh, in terms of, but, you know, staying out of it simultaneously. So it would make sense to me that they, they pushing that, that realm, but Man, I don't know if we're going to get an apocalypse, though, man. But I can see the Galactus one. Uh, and I, I do think that whenever it comes with the Eternals, I mean, we're, we're literally talking about uh, uh, the split because I've been saying this for a while, I think, talking with you guys on it, where it was uh, this battle, C- Celestials and Titans, and then Eternals after that. And I think Thanos was always supposed to be a Titan in that, uh, what obviously came from the planet Titan. But he's supposed to be a Titan, uh, or I guess maybe Eternals and Titans are on the same level. I always forget which one it is. So to be able to see what the lead up was 
in terms of that um, is interesting. But I do think we are getting to I think we're getting a Galactus setup, but I definitely think we're getting the seeds for the mutants. So even coming out of this trailer, like you said, you saw a lot of the DNA, um, the DNA uh, symbolism. I, it, it's always from day one, especially after Loki, was always these guys standing right on the outside of the timeline, having to be able to watch this, the humanity, humans grow and develop and help them find their way as the, what were they, what they're created to just be that middle ground, basically like angels, like call them what they are. They're freaking angels. They're celestial. They're, they're, just, they're just mortal angels. You know, <laughs> you know, but uh, it's it's I, it, it seems like it's going to set up so much more in that direction, uh, and especially leading into Fantastic Four. Yeah, I think it's a lead up to expanding a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So for me, it's it's a teaser more than it is a trailer. Like right. it, it's. It's 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 uh, putting up or a t I don't know if you know the difference between a teaser and a trailer. A teaser gives you impressions of what a movie about. It gives you some some mm -hmm. vague not not vague. That's vague is probably not the right word, but it gives you impressions. A very surface idea. surface level about what's happening. The trailer gives you plot. Right now, so when we talked about uh, Chang Chi before, Chang Chi, it had. A, I told you about the hook. This is between me and my father. That's the hook. That's the plot. Right. It doesn't go into much different, but it gives you a base plot. When I watched The Eternals, I got the idea, okay, these guys are coming down, and I got the impression that, as you guys have been saying, that this is going to go into all kinds of interesting directions. But as yet, I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what is going to happen in this movie that's going to be the problem. The only way we can figure that out at the moment is by theory crafting. Right, it's just by saying, "Oh well, we go to this, this, and that all might be true." So I, I'm not wrapped into this yet until, you know, it'll it'll come. You know, that we, it'll come. They down the road, we get to see this fleshed out. I just want to want to know what um what John Snow's doing in it. Like he's a big actor. I think, I think they have an idea. Well, it's supposed to be the Black Knight. He's yeah. like yeah. he's a huge actor. He should be a huge selling point. Right, I, so we I see think, Hayek, we see all the other guys, and we get a tiny snippet of him. If he's supposed to be a Black Knight, he's supposed to be an important character. Whoa, why are they hiding I, him I, away like that? I think you know, I have an idea about what's going on here. I think the Eternals and this movie would be fighting amongst themselves as well. Because if you notice, like King in the first King in the North, uh, Rob Stark, yeah. Like with with the, with the with with like the love scenes, the marriage scenes. Like he's more. It looks like he's he's the one who's more in love in the relationship. Right. Then, if if you if you notice that, um, it's always like that. And I think we're gonna see. Um, I think that was I forget it. Um, it might be Cersei. I I'm not sure. That uh, the, the the love interest is actually going to end up with um, Black Knight. Uh, Black Knight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting. Now, the, the casting is interesting. Like, it's it's a pretty serious cast. Yeah, I mean, the fact know? that Angelina Jolie. Look, I, I, to be honest, that was the one that surprised me the most because she seems the least likely to want to allow herself to be caught up into a multi-picture deal. And you know yeah, Disney yeah, yeah. only now does multi-picture deals if you're going to be in a Marvel yeah. film, yeah, yeah. In, a, in, in a Marvel project. So for her to be caught up, it, it speaks volumes to what the script should or what the script that she got was and how far reaching this one would, ought to be because she's not a person that does that's going to do a movie for a money grab. And, uh, and yeah, I feel yeah. like she's been trying yeah. to still find her proper action movies since... Um, Tomb Raider, and after one the failure thing. of that, um, the failure salt of uh, Born, what was it? Salt or Wanted? Yeah, Salt. That terrible Born identity replicant, Salt. Right. You know, um, like I, I feel like it is, but this is this has to be something that is so surreal, but so wildly in depth at the same time to have her be able to cast on. And I also like to talk about how the fact that 
the uh what's his name well he's always going to be known as john snow so he's got to live with that that john that snow. kid harrington but yeah. you never run away from we, it but we've got is, two kings that, in that, the that north throw, say what we've got two kings in the north yeah we do and the fact that game of thrones <laughs> season eight was so terrible it was so bad that that we don't even feel excited about seeing them both on the screen again. Like oh, Game I of Thrones know. season eight. I don't know. I don't know. So I still like Game of Thrones. Oh, I agree with you. It's bad, but I like seeing Kit Aronson and um. But it, it, but it doesn't. It, it, do you feel moved by it? Like you're just like, oh man, that's cool that they're on. But do you be like, yo, oh, we gotta get them again? Yo, you don't have that. You don't have it. If we had stuck in season six and it happened and then you saw this go, you'd, you'd be like, yo, oh, the kings okay. of the north are about to battle. Let's go. You don't get that. I, I agree that it's taken the shine off it, but I'm still, I'm, I, if anything, I'm keen to see them come back and do something really good again, I guess. To, to, yeah. to, to meet the, the expectation, to fulfill the expectation of the first couple of seasons of uh, Game of Thrones. But um, yeah, you, yeah I, I take your point. I take your point. You, you're not jumping out of your skin like you would say uh, if you saw, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I get you. I think this will be um, Kit Harington's uh, thing to shed off the Jon Snow character. I think yeah, yeah. we're but gonna see the Black a lot. Knight? Yeah, probably. Yes, I think we're gonna see a lot more Black Knight I think we're being set up for, for a lot of huge things and for a lot of things that will take a few movies and TV series. Well, like, well, I've, been, I've, been here, I've, one, I've been heard he's been the one tagged most likely to, to actually join the Avengers, that the Black Knight actually has a history with the Avengers. You tell me, because that's, that's what I've heard on the grapevine. Um, I didn't read much of the Eternals comics, so I, I, I have um, John Snow's been affiliated with Avengers and Avengers West Coast, I think, and I'm not sure about um, Excalibur. Because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, it's, it's been a while, but. Oh, yeah, that King Arthur was in, in the Marvel comics as well, too, that they made uh, yeah. another iteration. Yeah, they, they had Excalibur, the, the team with, um, with Psylocke and Captain Britain and uh, Kitty Pride. And um, they had they had the Pen Dragon comics, um, so we'll never know what we're gonna see. We're, um, interestingly, because there are times in the comics where the, the, the Black Knight is actually a villain, so I think this is what we're going to see here. And let's remind our friends to please click on the subscribe button. And hit that notification bell so you know when we have new videos out. Subscribe. 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 Or die. Or die.